Father, breathe upon your word. Father, breathe upon your word. Breathe upon your word. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. He said, For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might in the inner man strengthened with might in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. Strengthened with might by his power in the inner man Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 He said Finally my brethren Be strong In the Lord And in the power Of his might Be strong In the Lord And in the power Of his might this morning we are looking at the subject of secrets of inner bracket spiritual strength. Secrets of inner strength. Secrets of spiritual strength. Bracket spiritual. Secrets of inner or spiritual strength. In this study we shall look, understand first of all what spiritual strength is dealing with. Understanding inner or spiritual strength. Then we shall understand the value of inner or spiritual strength. And then we shall understand the secrets of inner or spiritual strength. So when I say inner strength and I say spiritual strength, I'm using the same word and they are interchangeable. We live in a world today where people boast and brag about different strength or power that they have. And I'm going to categorize them. There is physical strength or power. That is brute force. The power of the weightlifter. The strength. Of the wrestler. Which basically attends to the physical. Then we have intellectual strength of power that some people boast about. This is in the intellectual or the academic realm. I am a professor of this or I am knowledgeable in this or I have a PhD in this or do you know who you are talking to at all? There are those who boast in that realm. Then there is financial strength or power. This is the realm where money 
seems to be the most important thing to the life of the person involved. And you know, you know, do you know who I am? Do you know the size of my bank account? Do you know what I can do? Do you know I can travel anywhere in the world at any time? Financial strength or power. Then there is military strength or power. That is, of course, the military might and strength of nations where they boast in the number of fighter aircrafts they have, armored personnel carriers, and those kind of things. Then you have emotional strength or power, which is the strength of the, of, of the emotion, the mind. The capacity to literally withstand emotional stress. stress. You know, there are some people who are emotionally unstable, very, very highly unstable very fearful, very, very agitated, very anxious, very worried, very, can easily cry for anything. There is emotional strength and power. There is also those who boast in their occultic strength and power. This is the realm of the diabolic, the realm of evil. There are those who boast in that realm. And then, of course, the seventh is the spiritual strength or power. Spiritual or inner strength or power, which is at the top of it all. That is what we are dealing with this morning. I want to say three things that are facts about every other strength apart from spiritual. First, every other strength aside spiritual strength is limited. They have their limits. They come to points where they can no longer function. There is the limit of physical strength. For example, the man has built his muzzle and is bragging and moving about with his chest looking for who to fight until he sees a man with a gun. <laughs> and before his muzzle could function in any way, that will never be your portion. So every other strength have their limit. The intellectual man can come to points where his intellect has reached his peak. And so on and so forth. Every other strength, they have their limits. Apart from spiritual. Second, every other strength or power can fail. Every other strength or power can fail. In Genesis chapter 47 verse 15, the Bible told us of how money failed in Egypt. Money failed. That is, people had money, but he could do nothing. The, the money was available, but it lacked the power to produce result. We have had people whose intellectual powers failed. The professor of internal medicine who did an ultrasound scan on himself only to realize that he was suffering from primary liver cell cancer. And he looked to his resident doctors and his consultants and those under his team and told them bye. That is, <laughs> I have been a doctor of internal medicine, a consultant for years. I have not seen one person recover from this. Even though I'm the professor in this realm, I am limited now. You just wave them by. Every other strength, every other power can fail. Alexander the Great, one of the most rugged, brutal generals 
that ever lived conquered the whole world at a very young age. Came to the point by July 3, 56 to June 3, 23 BC. He was aged 33 only. Dealt with the whole realms of Greek and Greece and Persia and so on. The point came when after conquering the whole world and he said there was no more walls to conquer. The then world, known world to him. He was sick. And his power failed. His doctors looked at him. And they didn't know what to do anymore. And when he was about to die, he told them, do three things for me. First of all, in the day of my burial, let my doctors carry my dead body on their shoulder. He was talking to his top generals. Secondly, let them pour all my diamond and precious stones and money and everything and coins on the floor ground between the house and the burial ground. Thirdly, let them bury me with an open hand. The general said, we can do anything you want, oh general, but please can you tell us the meaning of what you have said to us? And he said to them, I have said that you should do all that, number one. First, my doctors should carry me on their shoulder to show the world that in the day of your birth, of your death, no doctor can save your life. They were watching while I died. So let them be the ones to carry me on their shoulder and go and bury. Pour the money on the ground to let it know that it was worthless. It meant, it meant nothing. It was the same and equal to the earth. Bury me with an open hand to show that I have carried nothing out of this world. He failed. That was why I believe Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 to 24 said, Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Don't boast about your wisdom. Don't boast about your power. Don't boast about your riches. But let him who will boast all glory boast in the Lord. The psalmist said, I make my boasting in the Lord. That he understandeth and knoweth me. Why? Because the day who know their God shall be strong. That I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight. Saith the Lord. Hallelujah. So in case you are watching right now, you are boasting in anything you have or anything you are. Every other strength. Every other power can fail. Finally, the fact about the strength and power is that every other strength or power deal mostly with earthly things. They deal mostly with things in the scope of the earth. It is only spiritual power that deal with both earthly and eternal things. Every other power Strength or power deal mostly with earthly things. Whether it was physical power, whether it was intellectual power, financial power, and emotional, and so on and so forth. They deal with the earth. The occultic, diabolic man is more concerned about how to be wicked on it. And also that one fail. Hallelujah. So spiritual power is at the top of the list. But before I go on, let me make a clarification. It is not as if the other powers are not needed. They are very needed. Apart from the occult power, of course. And the military, the, the nations need their might. But I'm talking majorly about physical strength. It's needed. To be strong physically is needed. 
You need a strong body, a sound mind, and a fervent spirit to fulfill destiny. You need that. You need a strong body to be strong bodily. A mind that is sound. A spirit that is on fire to fulfill your destiny. So it is important. The physical strength is important. You need to be healthy. You need to be strong. You need to be vibrant and buoyant to achieve most things in life and even in God. You need that. Very, very important. You need to be strong mentally and intellectually. You need that. You need that. You need mental and intellectual strength to be able to deal with the intellectual realms and deal with the mental realms and to be able to upgrade the quality of your life even in the physical. It is true that education or mental power enhances even any power. It is true. We need financial strength. The Bible said money answereth all things. That is in the realm of this physical. And even for impact on humanity and eternity, finances are needed. To live a life that is un not under pressure, to be comfortable, to be able to touch lives around you, to be able to lay up treasure in heaven, you need financial strength as well. Very important. And of course, emotional strength. You don't want to be the kind of person crying in front of the devil all the time. And so on and so forth. So, this is not to be misunderstood that those strengths are not needed. But the point of the matter is, if all that you have is the financial, the physical, the, the emotional, and the, and, the, and the intellectual strength, that is all you're boasting, then your destiny is limited. Then your spiritual life, everything might be disastrous for time and eternity. In all you're getting, at the top of every of the things you will get and any strength you will have, the spiritual is at the top. Because of course, the spiritual will enhance other things. Spiritual strength will enhance even your emotional audacity. Spiritual strength will connect you with wisdom to take from the devil what is yours and so on and so forth. At the top of it is spiritual or inner strength. Having said all that, what is the value of spiritual strength? The value of inner strength. Why do we need inner strength? Number one, for victory in battle. For victory in battle. For victory in battle. We have said consistently that based on what I heard from my father and the Lord Bishop Uyedepo for the first time, he said, life is a battlefield, not a playground. Not the kind of playground children play in. Life is warfare, not funfair. The fact is that whether you are interested or not, the fight is on. It says, for we wrestle. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, we wrestle. It's not a matter of whether whose trouble did I look for. We wrestle. For some of us, the fact that you are still alive is a, is a battle, is a torment to some people. The fact that everything they have done against you, nothing has worked. He said, be strong in the Lord. Ephesians 6.10 For we wrestle. 6.12 Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. For we wrestle. We wrestle. It's not against flesh and blood, but against, we wrestle against principalities. Hallelujah. The fact that you look the way you look is a pain to some demons and their agents. The fact that you are serving God and not serving the devil. When the glory dome was built, some demons and their minions and their agents rose. 
if it was a beer parlor, no concern. The largest beer parlor in the world, no problem. The largest disco hall in the world, no problem. If it was um, anything, no problem. But it belonged to God. People will gather a mass. Souls will be snatched from hell. The statement is made for the kingdom. Then demons ran mad like they drank whiskey. We wrestle. <laughs> or like they drank cannabis or Indian hemp. We wrestle. So you don't need to look for anybody's trouble. You live, we live in a world where everything I was talking with um, my children the other day and one of them was saying that she, was, she watched something um, very very neat clean video on YouTube um, interesting exciting appealing innocent clean yet it, it saw a lot of thumb, thumbs down what is dislike sign? So what, what offended this one for dislike? <laughs> and then it was then I get, got to realize that there are people whose duty is to be thumbing down any good thing they see. Anything they see that is good, thumbs down, dislike. That it is good is their annoyance. They are, they are sad, sadistic. So that is the kind of world we live in. That the man and his wife are together happily is a, is, is a, is a problem for some people. That there are people who are happy for as long as you keep on begging them for something. The moment they don't see you again, it is war. Oh, the man is free. Oh, the man is loose like he has money now. I, I, I've not seen any text from him anymore. So we wrestle. You need inner strength for this pernicious, wicked wrestling attempts from the world. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 40. He said, for thou hast guarded me with strength to battle. To battle them that rose up against me. To battle. Them that rose up against me has thou subdued under me. You have guarded me with strength to battle. You guarded me with strength to battle. Strength to battle. Strength to battle. You guarded me with strength to battle. Very, very important. Psalm 18 verse 39. Psalm 18 verse 39. It's almost a repetition of that same scripture. Say, for thou hast guarded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. You subdued under me those that rose up against me. So, for victory in battle. Victory in battle. In order not to end as a casualty of the battles of this life. You need spiritual strength. Against witchcraft, against occultic people, against bad will. You know, bad will works like witchcraft. You need inner strength. Second, for surviving adverse times. For surviving adverse times. Surviving adverse times. You need it. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and in verse 1, in the last days, this know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. Strength, stress, imparting times shall come. That's another translation. Strength, reducing times. Times of high pressure. Times of so much demand. 
You are face to face with strength, strength reducing times, with stress imparting situations from time to time. In order not to cave in for life's pressures, in order not to give up, you need inner strength. This is not battle now. This is just the normal pre I mean, pressure around. This, it, this coronavirus situation is a high pressure situation. The lockdown in various nations of the world is a very high pressure situation. There may be work pressure. Pressure, severally. You need inner strength. When I was in the, medic, in the medical school, the, the academic pressure was intense. Very, very intense. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Every day. For literally six years. And then, had a break in between. In my second year, to third year, were out of a class of 120, 29 passed without any receipt. Without any receipt. About 30 to 40 had to repeat. And that 30 or so were withdrawn. That was how intense it was in those days. I don't know of now. But by spiritual art, by, by being armed spiritually, I passed through that season of my life like I was doing nursery. I had never imagined looking at the notice board once and see fail on the screen as a student at that time. And I was doing my spiritual exercises between one to three hours of prayer in the morning before the first class. Another short time in the afternoon before the day was over. When you are face to face with pressures of life, whatever kind of pressure that is, and you have mustered sufficient spiritual strength. You are equal to the task. More than equal to the task. Did you, you heard that? What Paul the Apostle said? Philippians. Chapter 4. Verse 13. 12 and 13. 13. I can do all things. Through Christ. We strengthen it to me. I can do all things. I can do all things. You look at what the Amplified Version said. I can do all things. Through Christ, we strengthen me. Amplified Version. I can do all things. Which he has called me to do. Through him, who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Now, this is the exciting part, the B part. I am ready to, for anything and equal to anything. That is, I am equal to any emergency. I am wired for any urgency. Through him who infuses me with inner strength. That's right. I am ready for anything, equal to anything, wired for any emergency. Like the lion. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 30 verse 30. As a function of strength, the lion doesn't turn away for nothing. He said a lion which is the strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any. Doesn't turn away. It's not turning away for nothing. Why? Strength. 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 For surviving adverse, adverse times. For being equal to the urgencies of life. For being equal to the emergencies of life. To face things and face them out. Inner strength is needed. Spiritual strength. Number three, why do we now, now, like I said, in order for you not to cave in for pressure or give up, you need inner spiritual strength. Number three, for the possession of 
God ordained inheritance in order to take what is yours, you take it by force. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 he said and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and they violent take it by force the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force from the days of John the Baptist till now the kingdom suffer violence and the violent take it by force. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 to 7. Moses was charging Joshua. He said, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth that, that go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Verse 7. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage. For thou must go with these people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them. And you shall cause them to inherit it. But you need strength. You need strength to take it, to take what is yours. You need strength. You can't be a weakling and possess your possessions. You can be, you cannot be feeble and timid and possess your possessions. Caleb possessed his possessions by spiritual strength. In Joshua chapter 14 verse 10. Joshua chapter 14 and in verse 10. And now behold the Lord has kept me alive as he said these 40 and 5 years. Even since the Lord spake his word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. He said, and now, lo, I am this day four score and five years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. And he said in verse 12, Therefore, give me the mountain. Just allocate it to me. The Anakins are there. I will drive them from it and take it. I will drive them and take it. Hear this. Divine allocations many times attract demonic contentions. When God has allocated your portion to you, Enemies will contend it. Divine allocations many times attract enemy contentions, both human and demonic. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 and in verse 24, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24, he said, Rise ye up, take your journey and pass over to the river Anon. Behold, I have given into your hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Contend with him in battle. If you are not happy with your current possession in God, you are not happy with your current possession in God, then make up your mind to gather heavier dimensions of inner spiritual strength so that you can proceed and take what is yours. For the possession of God ordained inheritance. Number four, for the scaling or for scaling heights in life and destiny. You need strength to scale heights. Spiritual strength, you, you, you shift from level to level in the journey or in, in, your, in, your, in, in your life. You scale by strength. Strength. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19. He said, For the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon my high places. I am shifting level, level to level by virtue of strength. You gain height. 
and you gain altitude spiritually and otherwise by strength, spiritual strength. When the construction of the glory dome was going on, the, the roofing the, at the center is about 44 meters high, which is like the height of almost seven story buildings. Those who walked about 21,000 pieces of metals were joined end to end. Those who walked at that height, they were made to climb from one end to another. If you're able to successfully climb from this end and pass it to the other end, then they can recruit you to walk up there. <laughs> Funnily, I was telling one young man, I said, would you like to walk up there? I said, no way. Then I told him, supposing they give you one million, and I said, no way. <laughs> he can't walk there. Because his mind is not strong enough to walk at that height. <laughs> you want to scale heights in life. Strength. Spiritual strength. Spiritual strength. Jesus is seated at the right hand of his father because he mustered enough strength to whip principalities and powers. He disarmed them and then went up there and sat there. Number five. For the creating, or rather, for the establishment of generational exploit, of spiritual exploit. For the establishment of spiritual exploit, strength is needed. The people that do know their God, Daniel 11, 32b, they shall be strong and do exploits. They shall be strong and do exploits. Exploits belong to the strong, not the weak. They shall be strong and do exploits. You cast out devils by spiritual strength. You snatch souls from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light by spiritual strength. You, you generate results for heaven by spiritual strength. Weak people can't do exploits for the kingdom. You need strength. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. I heard of Evan Roberts who prayed for revival in Wales for almost 13 years. And he kept at it. And fire fell. William J. Seymour prayed for revival in America. The Azusa Street Revival for about five years, five, five and a half hours every day for five years. Lord, what is happening? He said, increase the fire. Increase the, increase the, the fire. And then he increased two more hours for about two more years. Seven and a half hours prayer restlessly. Then the fire fell. Exploits belong to the strong. You, you, you are not sure that you are doing enough for the kingdom. Then move higher in spiritual strength. Number six, for running the race. Without exhaustion. Running the race. Yes. Christianity is a race. Spirituality is a race. How do I say so? First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to verse 25. Paul the Apostle speaking. He said, now you know that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run. That you may obtain. Run, 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 run. And everyone that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. And they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Run, run. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. He said, We have foreseen. We are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. 
and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run the race run with patience the race that is set before us christianity is a race journey to heaven is a race second timothy chapter 4 verse 6 to 7 the King James Version, then the New Living Translation, he said, for I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that will love his appearing. Now look at the New Living Translation if you have it there. Of the same scripture, Second Timothy chapter four. He says, "As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. Poured out as an offering. The time of my death is near." That was Paul speaking. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. Wow! And now the prize awaits me. The the crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteous judge will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. I have, I have <laughs> run the race and I have remained faithful. I have finished the race. Many start the race, but not many finish it. Many fall by the wayside. Demas, Demas, having loved this present world, according to Paul, has deserted him. Many fall by the wayside. I remember the young man that I spoke with in the university days, born again Christian, child of God, was even in a department in the, in the, in the, in the, in the fellowship. Suddenly. He, he began to slide back and began to move with um, a girl and just got himself a girlfriend or somebody, somebody who wasn't in, in the church at all. And I went close to this young man. I said to him, brother, please don't do this. He became so angry with me and he said, look, don't tell me what you are telling me. I don't care if there is heaven or hell. And he said, and if there is hell, I don't mind going there. Wow. I went for a conference in Lagos. I think that was around 500 level. Returned back to, to the campus. The first news I heard was that this man, this young man, became sick. Began to vomit. They took him to the school health center. He couldn't recover. Before they could rush him to the teaching hospital, he died on the road. He vomited like two bucketfuls of vomitors. Brought in dead to the accident and emergency, the casualty. BID. Taken straight to the mortuary. When I heard it, I, I just, that was my first time of being conscious of falling, falling without anybody pushing me. I heard, I said, what? I fell flat on my face. Call it collapsing, whatever it is. Because the, the last word, I, my last discussion with him was ringing in my ears. Even if there is hell, I don't mind going there. It wasn't for weeks before he passed. I said to myself, I, 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 I said, Lord, what kind of overtime did the devil do on this boy like this? Pulled him out of the faith. And then before you could say praise the Lord, he cut him short to send him to hell. I don't know what the terminal, maybe he made his way right at the end, maybe. I don't know. I hope so. But that was the last statement he made. You see, the race, of, this race, we must make it to the end. And every race you run requires strength. Race requires strength. Race requires strength. Psalm 19 verse 5 and 6. When people get tired, they say, and they have, Psalm 19 verse 5 and 6. It's talking about the son, which is as a bridegroom, coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. I can stop there. He rejoiceth as a strong man to run the race. 
race is run with strength. When the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, he ran faster than the chariot of Ahab in 1 Kings 18, 46 because that imparted him strength. You need spiritual strength. Not to think of backsliding for any reason. You need spiritual strength not to be depressed into suicidal thinkings. You need spiritual strength. You need spiritual strength to run this race without getting tired and to hear well done thou good and faithful servant at the end of your journey as we round off what is the secret of inner strength but what have we said so far concerning the value of strength for victory in battle for the surviving of adverse times for the possession of God ordained inheritance for scaling heights in life and destiny. For the establishment of generational and spiritual exploits. For running the race without tiredness. We need spiritual strength. What is the secret of inner or spiritual strength? Number one is the knowledge of God. We read that already in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 B. The knowledge of God. He said, and the people and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. The knowledge of God imparts strength. Not just knowledge about God, but knowledge of God. Lord, I need to know you. Show me yourself. Reveal some aspects of you. to Show me what I don't know about you. The knowledge of God. The greater your knowledge of God, the, the, the greater your inner strength. The greater your knowledge of God, the greater your spiritual power. The difference between saints of old and saints of today is the knowledge of God. Strength. Number two is the presence of God. The presence of God is a spiritual strength refueling center. A spiritual strength refueling center. The Bible said they go from strength to strength. Psalm 84 verse 7. Every one of them in Zion appeared before the Lord. Every one of them in Zion. Every appearance before God. Whether it is in the congregation of the saints. Or in your personal place of devotion. In past strength. Creating the atmosphere of his presence around your life. In, com in communion. In worship and worship climate in past strength. The presence of God. Psalm 96 verse 6. Also it says. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. So every time you come before him. You will, get, you will be dressed with honor. Dressed with majesty. Clothed with strength and clothed with beauty. That's what the presence of God does for you. You look younger. You look handsome. You look beautiful. You look, you look fresher. Number three is the word of God. The word of God is a tonic of strength. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. That proceeds from the mouth of God. Luke chapter 4 verse 4. The word of God brings you life. It brings you strength. The way a person is weak without eating physical food. That is how a person is weak without eating spiritual food. Did you hear that? The way a person is weak without eating physical food. That is how the spirit life of a person is weak without spiritual food. The word. The word strengthens you. As you look into scripture, every fresh light imparts you with fresh strength. As you listen to messages such as this, either live like this or true preached messages, every gush of light brings you a gush of strength. The word of God. First John chapter 2 and in verse 14, he said, I have spoken to you young men. First John chapter 2 verse 14. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you 
and you have overcome the wicked one. So when, when the word of God abides in you, you will be strong, you will be young, <laughs> and you will overcome the wicked one. You will be strong, you will be young, and you will overcome the wicked one. When the word of God abides in you, you will be strong, you will be young, you will overcome the wicked one. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 29. He said, the way of the Lord is strength to the upright. You see, the word of the Lord is the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright. Access his ways and you connect with strength. Access his way and you connect with strength. So the presence of the, 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 the knowledge of God will be number one. The presence of God is number two. The, the word of God is number three. Number four is waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Habitual waiting on the Lord in fasting and prayer is a spiritual strength impatter. Spiritual strength impatter. Waiting on the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They that wait on the Lord. You know, spiritual strength is responsible for deal, dealing with forces of darkness. Matthew chapter 17 verse 21, Jesus speaking at, at once said, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Talking about a kind of demon. It, it can't be dealt with until you, you, you build more strength through praying and fasting. Second, First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 11, it says that we, we can seek the Lord and seek his strength. Seek the Lord and seek his strength. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. So at the place of seeking, the place of praying, the place of waiting on the Lord, the place, place of fasting is a place where spiritual strength is renewed. Where you, you release your weakness and take up his strength. Waiting on the Lord. Number five is the joy or praise of the Lord. The joy or praise of the Lord. The Bible said in Nehemiah chapter 10, 8 verse 10b, it said the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. The joy, the be part. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. He said the labor of the olive shall fail and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no head in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. He said the Lord is my strength. You see? As I rejoice, as I joy in him, he supplies and imparts me strength. Depression only deprives of strength. You can't be depressed and be energetic. It is not possible. If you are not enthusiastic, you can't be energetic. If you are not excited, it is not possible to be uplifted. The joy of the Lord. Don't play with sadness. Don't play with depression. Apart from attack, apart from attack in your health because a merry heart do it good like medicine it attacks your strength depression, sadness it doesn't matter what is going around there is something to thank God for there is something to be grateful for there is something to praise God for there is something to be excited about there is something to shout about hallelujah the joy of the Lord Psalm 8 verse 1 to 2. Psalm 8 verse 1 to 2. The Bible said, O Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Hast thou ordained strength. Now if you saw Jesus, how Jesus quoted this passage in Matthew chapter 21 verse 16, then you will understand something. He said, and he said unto him, Hearest thou not when they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna? He said, And Jesus said unto them, Yeah, 
Have you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou perfected praise. Alright? In, 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 where it was read, he said, has thou ordained strength? Out of the mouth of babes. He is quoting this now. He said, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, has thou perfected praise? There are things that are constants there. Mouth, babes, sucklings. The only difference between the two scriptures is ordained strength and perfected praise. So, what is that? Straight line. Ordained strength. Perfected praise equals ordained strength. Babe and babe is the same. Suckling and suckling is the same. Out of mouth, all is the same. The only thing that is different in the two passages, whereas Sam said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, hast thou ordained strength, the master quoted and said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, hast thou perfected praise. So everywhere there is perfected praise, there is ordained strength. Everywhere, everywhere. If you can walk in praise, you will walk in strength. If the, so if the devil wants to attack your strength, he attacks your praise. He wants to attack your strength, he attacks your joy. Hallelujah. Very, very important. The joy or the praise of the Lord. That was number five. Secret of strength. Number six is the spirit of the Lord. Flowing. Okay, put it like flowing in the Holy Ghost. The spirit of God is called the spirit of might. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 is the spirit of might and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And what is that? The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of the knowledge of the Lord. So the spirit of the Lord is an infuser of might. Is an imparter of strength. No wonder. He said in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 6 and 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. Say, Wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift which is in you by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of timidity but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. That spirit is the spirit of God. The spirit of power. The spirit of audacity. Energy. Might. So every time you are, Every time you connect with the Holy Spirit, at, either at the place of praying, Worshipping in the spirit or being directed by the Holy Ghost, you are connecting strength. This is exciting. Is somebody getting something at all? Masha Tokalabayada. And seven, the acceptance. All right. The attitude of helplessness, personal helplessness, and humility. This impact strength. They bring strength. The attitude of personal helplessness and humility. Yes. God does not empower braggadocious people. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. He said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made Perfect in your weakness. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Hallelujah. 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 Strength is made perfect. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and in verse 1, he said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace. And what is the major door of grace? Humility. He giveth grace to the humble. 
James chapter 4 verse 6. He giveth grace to the humble, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he, he, he said, God resisted the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. So if you, if you, if you submit humility to God, he will, sub, he will supply you grace. And grace brings strength. He said, be strong in the grace. Hallelujah. See, when people move about like uh, as if they are demigods, right? That they can do without God. They behave as if everything that is, that they have is their achievement. Just, 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 just powerful. They feel very powerful. I'm not saying you shouldn't be bold. I'm not saying you shouldn't be audacious. But when you are before God, you are zero. Your audacity should be rooted in your humility before him. You know, I shared the story many years ago and I'm, I'm rounding off now. I was in Makodi in Benue State for a, a meeting. Long ago, when our church was still at the railway crossing um, at the Tito Yogot side in Makodi at that time, where the church, around where the church started. And I was going for an early morning meeting. I had overworked myself and I slept till morning until it was a few minutes to the meeting before I woke up. What? I rushed to the bath, had my bath and did everything. Had to jump into the car, going straight for the meeting. Oh Lord, I am so sorry for how I slept last night. I'm sorry, I'm just so exhausted. I have to go to this meeting now. Please help me. Please help me. I was preparing message inside car. I was praying on the way to the meeting. Please help me. Please. Please. When I came to the meeting, what I saw, if I had fasted dry for three days, I'm prepared for hours for the message. I'm not sure how it would have been different. It was so powerful. Blind, deaf, deaf, lame, all manner, power move. On the way in the car, I felt so small, so humble. So I said, I said, Lord, what happened? <laughs> I'm going to paraphrase what I heard. It's something like, when I saw your helplessness, then I supplied my almightiness. It says, the, help, the helplessness of man provokes the almightiness of God. The helplessness. I'm not saying you shouldn't fast, and I'm not saying you shouldn't study the word. I do a lot of them. But after you have done all of that, surrender them before God. And don't make them look like the reason why you must see what, whatever you wanted to see. Lord, without you, I remain permanently nothing. Without you, I am, I, I, am, I am nobody. I surrender my strength, my abilities, my capability, and everything I, I can ever must, I surrender all to you. When you are at such a point, you will see so much until people think you are using something else. And they'll be wondering, what is the secret? What is this? this man must have something he's using. He hasn't told us everything. Hallelujah. I am excited this morning. This is my counsel in conclusion. One, strength is in levels. So there must be the determination to continuously build strength. Strength is in levels. In any realm, strength is in levels. Those who have money have it in levels. It's financial power. Those who have physical power, they have it in levels. Weight lifters lift different weights. Those, even military might is in levels. Strength is in levels. And so it is spiritually. Jesus said, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting, which means there is a kind you can handle at, at the level of power you have now. Strength is in levels. So there must be the determination to continuously build strength, spiritual strength. And you know, 
Your current level of exploit is a function of your current level of strength. Your current level of result is a product of your current level of strength. When your strength shifts levels, your result will shift levels. The strength you have currently brought, the strength you have had before now brought you to, the, to your current level. And if you are going to get more strength, get more results, build strength. Continuously determine to build strength because strength is in levels. Number one. Number two, never grow weary of doing what is profitable. Never grow weary of doing what is profitable. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. It said, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Hallelujah. The things you know to do, the knowledge of God, pursuit, keeping, know, keep, keeping on in knowing God, establishing the presence of God, the word of God, study of the word, trusting God to at least get a light per day, waiting on the Lord, the joy of the Lord, flowing in the spirit, and expressing your continuous helplessness and humility before God continually. Let these thing, next things ne never be tired of these things if your strength must continue. I believe you have received something today. Lift your voice where you are and let's appreciate God. Let's honor him for his word. Let's appreciate him. Let's adore him. Let's magnify him. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all honor. He is worthy of all adoration. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name. Worship to your name. Glory to your name. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. In the precious name of Jesus Christ.